but you can also see there's been a change in the formation on the troops on the hill. They've actually moved all of the archers to the flank. So let's see how well we will survive against the archer. Nose back to rock. Next archers, and the volley comes in. And another volley. Now the archers are at close range. And they're also at close range. And they're dropping all around them. Now they pull back. They're still coming, but they've lost the pace again. As they step through, the heavy infantry move forward. They're ready again to create courage. The current tightened up. And the weapons start again. Oh, mate, hurry up. Get in there. You can see the armoured men falling around the wing as well. So they're using the few troops they have, the professional troops, to make the difference. It means that Stanley's had to commit more of his reserves. And they're still not gaining any ground. Second attack, and they're still pinned within this grass. I believe the one that's come through with the axes might be on the other side. But... Oh. I think we've got a prison. Oh, no, they've been really nasty to that one, though. <laughs> I think the troops seem to be winning on the flat at the moment. They're giving ground, but they're not walking through. The handguns are giving up fire again. More action, you can see the heavily armored men try to pile in. It seems like a stalemate at the moment. Neither side is gaining the advantage. The Lord Stanley is relying on his numbers of troops. The more men he has, the physically the longer they should be able to last in the fight. So they should be able to rotate ranks or rotate men to keep fighting. But he's giving ground again. It's the second time they've been pushed back. And the archery begins again. This is the problem when you have no firepower support. What can you do? He's keeping on coming forward, but the problem is they're not getting through. This must be disheartening for Lord Stanley. Because his men will be getting tired. They're not taking any heavy wounds yet. But how much more can we absorb this sort of damage? On this sort of firepower, and how good is they will keep it? Think that would end with me. I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying. Hard luck. Quite authentic, that man. Cut fire over here. Have you noticed what the gun does do? The gun doesn't cause casualties, it restricts how they can move. Anything moving into the zone of where the gun is, if it's still loaded, if you're not certain it's loaded, and it's close enough, it just blow you away. So what they've done is they've been forced to go on a narrower and narrower field. So the numbers make no difference then on the fighting. My Lord Stanley is relying on his ability to outlast the enemy, to use attack after attack to wear the enemy down, to wear the king's troops down on the top of the hill, but they don't look like that's happening yet. They're still fighting, they're still holding, and there's no give. No losses have come yet, no go off the guns again. But you can see my Lord Oxford is pushing his troops into the middle, trying to punch his way through, and they fractured Stanley's forces. They spread them out across the field. This may pay off to my Lord Stanley, but he can use extra numbers. So the archery comes in again. How much longer this can go on? Well, tiredness is starting to become a factor now. And the odds are going in. 
and you can see some of Stanley's men are down. There's a second one down. The oh. Chaos. Chaos. They're starting to break. They're breaking around the edges. And another one is down. And another one in front of us. And there's two on the one. And they're dirty. And another one is down. He's the trick in his face is to peace feel. One by one, they're going down. I think my Lord Stanley's men are trying to pull the children. Oh no, come on again. Oh, he's got one. He's become isolated. And he's broken up the small engagement across the field. Another trooper has dropped. You see that some of the men are changing into shorter arms, side arms, to try and keep fighting. And another. Three left on this side, and over in the centre, there's loads left there. Take him! I think they have my Lord Stanley down, I think they have my Lord Stanley prisoner. There's still some left on the outside, and there's still some there. I don't think he's dead, it looks like he's breathing to me. Resting for tax purposes. I would like it could just be a response afterwards. That's not nice. <laughs> Lord Stanley. There's still some left in the middle. Now they're trapped. Depends on what Lancastrian captain wants to do. I think it's gone past the stage of, um, should we say, friendliness. <laughs> it's now moved into a more murderous state. And is he going to offer them quarter? Well, I can't hear anything. Well, the guns aren't. Well, they do seem quite easy terms to me. Give in or we'll kill you. Um, I think they've chosen the wrong option. Myself, as you can see, the infantry have knelt. The archery is loosing over the top of the close relation infantry. Which means, oh, and they're, they're trying to break out. You can see there's more pouring down the hill. They're going in, there's one. Well, two! I, I, I'd go quicker than that if I was you. <laughs> Three, definitely. Go! Run away! Well, two have got away. And that looks about it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the events are seen. The typical small-scale actions have happened throughout the Wars of the Roses. And you've seen a demonstration of the major tactics and how quickly, when one side can make an advantage, how quickly the other side is broken. And also how effective artillery and archery and veteran armoured men are. Oh, Lord Stanley's moving. But this is a show. And there's one thing I can do here which they couldn't do then. Gentlemen, you're not dead, you're just resting. Get two feet.